We're in Indiana, but the funny thing is, is that the water is Kentucky. Kentucky owns the Ohio River. So they, they owe to the low water mark of 1792. That's the year that Kentucky became a state. So we are sitting here right on the line right now. And it's a perfect place to take a tour. It is, it's ideal. We've got about uh, 85 river miles here. This really un very undeveloped, uh, beautiful scenery and um, a great place to come and experience the Ohio River. You have a couple of different tours. One of them though, you get to go fast. Fishtails, all that. Uh, we do, we have a New Zealand jet boat. Uh, we do a one hour, 20 mile uh, rockin' river tour. We take you out, tell you some outrageous river stories. We get you splashed, we do spins and slides. The boat's capable of doing about 70 miles an hour. Now we don't go that fast with passengers. We, we top out about 40 miles an hour. And you ask people afterwards, they think we're, we're doing 90. So it feels faster than what we're really doing. And uh, it's a great time. The other rides are dry, but that one we get you wet in the river. And there's a couple of different tours on the one that keep you dry. What are they like? So we try to set up our tours to give everybody an option uh, of something different, whether you have a day, whether you have a couple hours, or whether you have a weekend. So we do our longest trip, we go 155 miles. We go all the way to Frankfort, Kentucky, up the Kentucky River through four locks that were built in 1838. Um, we spend the night in Frankfort. We go to Buffalo Trace Bourbon Distillery, have music in the park, and then come back the next day. It's an awesome trip. Our most popular trip. Uh, uh, yeah, as well. I want to go on that very trip. Nice. There we do uh, midweek lunch excursion is 75 miles. We go down to Louisville, Kentucky and have a, a Riverside restaurant lunch and then come back and we're going about five hours on that trip. There, and also this stretch of the river, there's no road that follows it. So the only way you can see between here and, and uh, Louisville is uh, by boat and it's a beautiful section of river. And on these sightseeing tours, not only are you seeing the sights, but you also can spot eagles, natural wildlife. Yeah, it's uh, the eagles have come back in great numbers. You know, we started this business six years ago. We would see maybe one or two eagles all season long. We're seeing them about 75% of the, of the trips we're on. Um, every trip up the Kentucky River, we see eagles. We've seen as many as six in one day. Uh, there's bobcats up along that river we see occasionally. Last year, we spotted the bear for the first time. Hopefully, we'll see him again this year as well. Uh, wild turkeys, it's just, uh, it's a wild and scenic river, very little development, and it just goes back to nature. Thank you. Thank you. Now that was a legit adventure, but there's so many more adventures to be had in this edition of Route 44 Madison, so let's mount up. Fuel up for a day of adventuring in Madison at GH Coffee Company. Grab breakfast and a coffee, they roast their blends in-house. Fancy and their specialty coffee menu is sick. I'm having a tough time deciding between the Hawaiian salted caramel and the Pacific Northwest raspberry. Opt for a shot of healthy energy with one of their smoothies. The crew here are a bunch of overachievers. Their baked goods are handmade, so is their gelato, and so are the organic beauty products. Wait, what? Now that we're wired, it's time to hit the town. This place is so cool and what's even cooler is that it is quite literally one of a kind. It is the last of the 19th century saddle tree factories in the United States and perhaps in the world. Now what is a saddle tree? Well if you've ever ridden on a saddle it's the internal wooden frame or the bones of a saddle like I tell kids. So the saddle tree maker makes the wooden frame and then he sells it to the saddle maker who then attaches the leather and the stirrups and sells it to a final customer. In this place continued to make saddle trees until the 70s. How did it go from a saddle tree factory to a saddle tree factory museum? The place was in business until the last of the Schraders died in 1972. And then the uh, property got donated to our organization, Historic Madison Incorporated. We're a nonprofit historic preservation organization. And then the goal at that point was to uh, uh, conserve it and try to restore it uh, because of its uh, uh, significance in Madison's history. As we did more research, we found it was the last of its kind in the United States, which added the impetus to really do a, a high quality job restoring it. What were you telling me about uncovering the factory and there were still aprons on the wall and there's the machinery is all still there. All the machinery was left behind. There was still and still are uh, shop aprons hanging out there. There was a lunch box sitting by one of the machines, uh, sawdust on the floor from the last run of saddle trees. It's really a lot like, uh, as a historian once told me, it's like Pompeii without the lava. 
it, it, it's just, you walk in the door and you just become engulfed or surrounded by history. Oh, wow. Look at all this stuff. You weren't kidding. I mean, it really is like stepping back in time. It's amazing. I mean, there's stuff here, like the right behind you, Gretchen, is the uh, shop apron I was telling you about. Oh, and that's cool. been hanging on that nail ever since the day I got here. It's been there for 80, 90 years. These are the old patterns? These are the patterns for the saddle tree parts. You can see they're made out of old uh, beech nut tobacco boxes. There's, a cereal, there's cereal boxes and cracker boxes that they used for patterns. So they saved everything because they could reuse it for whatever they needed in their business. Yeah, and the clothespins were smart because how much leftover wood do you have from making a saddle tree? Tons of leftover wood. So then there were all sorts of clothespins. And this is one of the clothespins machines that takes the round clothespin and with this saw here when it's moving, cuts the slot in it to make the finished ah. clothespin. So what we ended up doing was we took the old Schrader parts and pieces that were somewhat made that were never finished and we did a reverse engineering process by looking at the tool marks and figured out what the process was, the step-by-step -step process to make saddle trees. That's smart. Uh, well, yeah, but that's one thing, and then to actually do it is a whole nother business. <laughs> it's really difficult work. Exploring the Schrader Saddle Tree Factory Museum is definitely a unique experience. I feel like we learned so much. However, there's so much more to see and do in Madison, Indiana. We gotta get on the road. Welcome to the manliest restaurant in Madison, Indiana. Upscale with a masculine feel, Harry Stone Grill has something for anyone with an appetite. Salads, pasta, sandwiches, and wraps, but where it's at is the steak. You can't come to a steakhouse and not have steak. Check out this 14 ounce ribeye. Oh my gosh. Look, like butter. They hand cut their steaks in house, so if you're manly enough to ask for a 24 ounce ribeye, they're up to the challenge. And did I mention their house specialty cocktails? Harry Stone Grill. They say that's where good food and good times meet. Well, I had good food and a good time. I am a kid in a candy store, and not just any candy store. Take a look around this place. It is absolutely gorgeous. And I love that we're gonna dip some candy. Cocoa Safari chocolates, uh, we make everything by hand. We have a couple of cases um, filled with those. I'm going to dip some dark chocolate turtles for you today. And uh, I've been in business for 13 years. Decided to uh, quit my corporate job and start doing this. So I used to work uh, in the hotel industry. This, so, this is way more fun. Yes, it, it, it is much more fun. So, <laughs> and delicious. Um, we make a lot of stuff here, but then we also carry some items like um, gummies and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, novelty foil wrapped chocolates for kids. So we have a lot to choose from. Oh, she just dug right in there. Yeah, that's what you have to do. And look, you no apron. You can't be shy about it. And look, no apron, she says, because she's a professional. <laughs> I'd have chocolate all over me. <gasps> How pretty. I could not work here. I'd be so fat. And you would have no inventory. <laughs> you do get a little bit used to it, but you know, people will say, oh, I bet you don't even like chocolate anymore. That is not true. Um, exactly. You never get to that point. And we have dark chocolate, milk chocolate, white chocolate. We do seasonal flavors of truffles and things like that. So, you know, there's always something new. So it's pretty easy as far as the dipping. Just don't want too much chocolate on it, but you need enough for your pecans to stick. And uh, the turtles are one of our top selling items. I bet everybody loves turtles. I haven't met a single person yet mm -hmm. that didn't. Oh, you're fast so at that's this. A, it doesn't take long to do these. So this is our dark, dark chocolate turtle, as I said, so. I wish we had some mellow vision. That's true. <laughs> and everyone who walks in, the first thing is like, ah, mm -hmm. wow, that's fabulous. So. It's, the sound, it's the smell of heaven. That's right. So that is how we dip a turtle. She even gave me an ice pack to keep my chocolates cool and keep them from melting while we're running around all day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great days come to an end at Indiana's oldest inn and bar, the historic Broadway Hotel and Tavern. Built in 1834, it still boasts the original bar back from 1869. Sit on the patio in comfort, it's air conditioned. Outsiders converge on Broadway for the good old Americana fair like prime filet mignon 
or their wildly popular Reuben. Their daily lunch specials are so popular and drinks have their own specials too. Cheers to Whiskey Thursday. When you stay, if you bump into their resident ghost Charlie, say hi. I hear he's a friendly guy. You know me, I'm always preaching shop local, eat local. One of the things that you'll find in Madison is that most of these businesses are actually family owned. <laughs> I walked through a sea of bubbles into the best smelling shop and instantly could tell that you were passionate about soap. Where does that passion come from? My wife and I got into it uh, 30 some years ago. We've always stayed with the natural end of things. Uh, <clears throat> it goes from our skin, uh, into our water, into That's our right. oceans, into the rivers. Mm -hmm. I'd say 90% uh, of all of our packaging, our labels, uh, everything that we're using, we're trying to get all biodegradable. Oh, that's so cool and great for the environment. And you guys have more than just soap. You've got a full care of, or full men's line. You have essential oils, a full line of that, and loofahs. We've got over 40 some types of soaps. Uh, we've got close to 200 products totally. And I love that you also have facial care for like acne and rosacea and that's all natural as well. It, it is, it is. And we have, uh, we have a, a soap pretty much for about any skin condition out there. Uh, the, the aromatherapy of uh, the essential oils are, are just amazing uh, to the body. And that's, that's what we're excited about. Not just that uh, we're making body care, but we're making products that's, uh, that's useful, uh, not only to the people, but to the environment also. There's the passion, there's the passion. I love that you guys are so environmentally conscious to the point where everything you see on this table, the packaging is actually biodegradable. Yeah, um, everything is made out of an earth product or bio and, and biodegradable. You've got your natural baskets, this will biodegrade. So even this little cellophane bag? Yes, yep, that's a biodegradable package, yeah. It took a while to get all of these things put together and we'd like to go forward with more products. But um, yeah, so everything here eventually will break down into the environment. Everything on the table, every package, every ingredient, every product. That is so awesome. Hi, welcome to the Red Peppermint. Locally owned, the Red Peppermint has over 25 flavors of ice cream and yogurt. And get this, they switch them up every other week. Choose from over 40 toppings, including fresh fruit, chocolates and candies, edible cookie dough, every gummy imaginable, desserts of all kinds, and the staff is pretty sweet, pun intended. I love the feel of a good bookstore, but this one, I walked in the door and I felt instantly comforted and at home. How did you do that? Part of it is what we created with the space. Uh, I come from a background in the theater and so I approach a space that way. Mm -hmm. So in a, in a way you're looking at, at a set design, but uh, the arrangement of it, the colors, the music, uh, and then the sort of books that we carry, all of that contributes to a, um, a welcoming feeling. I wouldn't say that you specialize in any one book. Why do you have so many different kinds? What draws you into these? Well, uh, we curate very carefully what we have because we're small. Um, so there are things that we don't carry. We're trying to set a, a literary high bar, uh, which is a challenge for us. We'd probably make a lot more money if we just carried any old thing. There are things that we don't carry because they're easily found at Walmart. Um, yeah, you have a ton of titles that I've never even seen yeah. and authors I've never even heard of. If Walmart is selling a title for 40% off that's just out, uh, it, why would we try to sell it at publisher list price. We do not ban books, right. we, but we curate, we select things that we think will work here, here and things that we want to, to promote. I cats love the cats are, running around. Yeah, we have three cats. Uh, we have, uh, and they're all rescues. We have Oscar Wilde, Gertrude Stein, and Alistair B. Toklas. We received an award from the state for our rehabilitation of the building, and we use the whole thing, top to bottom. We live upstairs. 
All three cats live here with us as well. This is our home and our business. And so it's the old way of doing things, having them, the, uh, the shop on the ground floor and the residence above. But we are, the shop is on two floors. And I love, I've walked in and you have soap from a local company and we they've did. actually changed the labels just for you. Uh, and that, we're, so we're cross promoting uh, their business down the street. We love their product, we love the people. And so we have uh, literary lavender, Oliver orange twist, poetic peppermint, and my favorite, Edgar Allan Poe Chuli. I love that. Now that we've nourished our mind and spirit, it's time to go have some more fun. Courtyard Grill boasts family dining with a grown folks feel, which makes sense when you know that this tasty stop is owned by two brothers with 13 kids between them. And these guys are so hashtag shop local that a lot of the ingredients they use, you won't get them from those big food suppliers. Have a healthy wrap, salad, or sandwich? or splurge on their signature fish sandwich or courtyard burger. I cannot tell you how many locals told us to eat here. It's absolutely beautiful in here. You're covered up in art, beautiful furniture, lovely conversation. We have wine, we're relaxing but you didn't start out as a wine bar. 15 years ago, we started as a custom table shop. And uh, there was just two of us. We started the gallery about 10 years ago when we brought our tables up to what we considered functional artwork, and we built a gallery around it to prove it. Smart. The three, three years ago, we started the wine bar with the idea, it was a marketing ploy actually, to get more people in to see our tables. We're a little bit down at the end of town here, and, not a lot of traffic, but we figured if we lured people in with alcohol and pizza, we would, you know, get particularly the locals to, to discover us. Even smarter. And we're not a restaurant, we're a wine bar that has very nice things to eat. So our specialties are the wood-fired pizza. We're the only place in town that does the wood-fired pizza. We have gourmet hamburgers, and on Fridays and Saturday nights, our feature is grilled 14-ounce ribeye prime ribeye steaks with uh, baked potato, sweet potato, salad, and a dessert. Tell me a little bit about how you select your wine, because this, this leaf, is just beautiful. Smooth, tasty. We're lucky because we're a wine bar and not a winery that we can choose whatever wines we sell. And uh, I have people smarter than me pick out the wine, but the one great thing about my job is I get the last word and I have to sample every single one. Oh, you're a man after my own heart. <laughs> Bad Apple Max is a super cute, eclectic looking restaurant known for their New England style comfort food. People come from all over for their locally sourced hand cut steaks and amazing burgers. Using family recipes, they create your dish from scratch, including the rolls. They've got a menu for the wee ones or get a babysitter, make it a date night and sip on a craft beer or fine wine. With daily specials, lunch, dinner, and brunch, it's always a good time to snack at Fat Apple Max. I don't think I've ever been to a museum that covers the history of an entire county. I like it. Tell me a little bit about the history of Jefferson and what you can see when you're here, and what am I gonna learn? We have a lot to offer here. Um, of course, our proximity to the Ohio River is a big deal. So there's a lot of steamboating information we have here. Um, and also we have railroad history and kind of like Cincinnati, we do have um, the hog production industry um, that went on for years and years here. But we've got some wonderful things to, to share for the county. And you can find out about the Civil War history here. Yes. And then you have a room, the Jefferson Room, that is housing traveling exhibits. Yes, it's our multi-purpose room and we've got um, right now a, uh, an exhibit on Hoosiers and Hooch, which is really fun. And we've got information about our local breweries uh, that are here, uh, that were here many, many years ago. And uh, we've got actually new breweries that are coming in um, that are in construction right now, so. And I love the interactive rooms because museums are basically hands off, don't touch. But in these two rooms, not only can you touch, but you can play. We set those up for the kids and it actually gives parents 10 minutes at least to go experience our exhibits. And so they can go in there and play. There's a general store where they can 
um, you know, buy produce and buy things. Who doesn't want to play store? Um, I told you I would be in that room all day. Yes. It is, it's fun to be in. I mean, we all kind of relive our history that way. And then we have a, a, a school room. Um, so the kids love to do that. When we drove up, I saw this really cute caboose. And then right next door is the railroad museum? Yes. So we've got a uh, caboose here. Um, it was made in 1918. It's our 100th anniversary for that. And it's restored and you can walk through it. It's completely restored inside. And then um, the original railroad depot is here um, and the tracks used to go out in front of it. So there is a woman's uh, passenger waiting area um, and it's entirely restored. And it really basically tells the story of railroading in um, Madison, um, but Madison Indianapolis Railroad was the first railroad in Indiana. So we have really early history relating to that. We could stay in the History Center all day long and still not learn everything there is to know about Jefferson County, but more adventures await, so let's go. Sample sweet treats like soft serve ice cream, shakes, sundaes, their special brain freeze, banana splits, regular cones, or even dipped. And if you're craving something more substantial, they've got burgers, fries, fish, and foot-long chili dogs. Yum! When it's time to cool off, Chillbilly Treats has your back. Coconut shrimp, house-made marmalade sauce, and a twice-baked potato. Oh my gosh, Did you see how big these are? The food is awesome, but owner Kathy Morgan is what gives Key West Shrimp House its unique flavor. I personally feel like no matter what my day's like, my problems no longer matter. It's about the customers that dine here. They're paying for a nice meal, and I feel like they should get that along with the friendly smile and customer service. It's a little shop, but it's jam-packed floor to ceiling of America's history. Well, there's just a little bit of everything in here. I, I've always dreamed of opening an antique store and this is my dream come true. I have uh, advertisement, uh, Crocs, just uh, a little bit of everything for somebody. Now that you're living the dream, do you, is it everything you wanted it to be? Oh, it's all that. I tell everybody that uh, the antique business is not a job, it's a lifestyle, and I really enjoy this lifestyle. Just meeting people and talking about things that I love, it's just, it's just a joy all the time. Well, and before you retired and opened this shop, you were always a picker. Yeah, I, I was a picker before they were pickers. We used to be called junkers, yep. and, I, and I still wear that with a badge of honor. I, I'm, I'm a junker, I'm not a picker. <laughs> There's so much variety in here. It takes a special person to curate a collection like this. You know, I, I just try to look for different. It's, you know, it, uh, there's a lot of common stuff out there and you've seen a lot of different malls and, and I think that's what distinguishes us from the other malls. Yeah, I saw a fully functional stove. What year is that from? Uh, it's 1930s. It was one of the first electric stoves they ever made and it's probably one of the most common uh, items that we talk about. Everybody wants to talk about the stove for some reason. They like it. It still has the instructions and the advertisement. Uh, right, and, and did you think about that, how many years all those things stayed together and that's you know it just fascinates me. What's it like to put together a customer with a piece of history and be able to actually explain that history to There's, them? It's uh, it's it's really rewarding. I, a perfect example was the day I had a gentleman who was standing right over top of this case and his wife was shopping and uh, she come walking up to him and, and I didn't even notice but he had tears coming out of his eyes and she said are you all right Rahun and he and he just kept pointing into the showcase and there was a little toy it wasn't even a toy it was a, a candy container that looks like a pistol and he got one of those the Christmas that his father passed away and it just brought back so many emotions to him that you know and, and I tell everybody we sell memories is that what we sell? And it was just a memory for him. And he's just tearing up right there in front of me. That's it was, gotta be it, it the always, best. It gives me goosebumps thinking about it. It really does. We gotta wrap up our shopping spree because there's so much more to do and see. Ha, <laughs> I rhymed. <laughs> Known for their live entertainment, considerable craft beer and bourbon selection, and amazing food, no wonder Off-Broadway Tap Room is so popular. I opened this place and I had more of my customers would kind of like get me into the beer. 
They'd come in, tell me what they like. I got to talking with them. They basically kind of led me to buying beers they liked, and from there I just started learning about it. And you love beer so much that you have like a beer lazy Susan. Yeah, that's a Bevador. This one we've refurbished, and now we use it for a beer cooler. Madison is home to some of the most spectacular views in nature and wildlife, and you help to protect it and educate all of us about it. Yes, that's our big goal here at Clifty Falls is to inspire um, our visitors to come out and enjoy nature and also learn a lot more about what they're seeing here in the park. We're the third oldest park in Indiana. Um, we became a state park in 1920. And the um, residents of the town of Madison were a huge part in us becoming a state park. They donated at least 50% of the funds to buy the land. Uh, tell me a little bit about the park. Now, all the locals are saying it's beautiful, it's full of natural wildlife, but it's called Clifty Falls, so I'm expecting some waterfalls. Yes, we have four named waterfalls, and we have Big Clifty and Little Clifty, which are the same height, um, it's just one is more wide than the other. And um, we also have Tunnel Falls, our tallest, at 83 feet. And we've also got a lot of fossils that you can see and a lot of unique geology too. When you're walking the creek beds and walking the trails, you can hunt for fossils, just don't pick them up. Yes, you can look for fossils um, on trail too. We do ask that you leave them and they're in the creek bed, but you can look all you want. We have some of the oldest exposed fossil beds in Indiana and they're all from the Ordovician period. What can we do when we visit the Nature Center? Here at our Nature Center, we have a bird viewing room. You can also check out our live reptiles. We have snakes, turtles, frogs, we've got a toad. And the turtles are adorable. They're one of our favorite animals. We do a lot of um, turtle talks, and reptile wraps, different kind of programs with our reptiles. What are you most excited about to tell people when they come to the park and they've never been here like me. I'm always excited to tell them about um, the fossils as we talked about earlier in our waterfalls and um, also the wildlife. I see more wildlife in this park than I see at a lot of other parks. And just, I like to tell them about our, just all the wildlife, the plants, just the unique um, geology formations. Exactly, it's like National Geographic except for opening a page, you just go into the park. The best way to end an adventure is to reconnect to nature and to yourself so you can get back to work recharged and relaxed. We hope we did just that for you and that you have an adventure in Madison, Indiana. We'll see you next time.